It is such an honor to be here today because Robin Hood has been a part of my home for a while now. These blocks were the centerpieces at your benefit back in 2016. After the event, Robin Hood donated them to partners like Children's Aid to make sure they were put to good use. And trust me, they are. My daughters play with them all the time. But I'm not here today to thank you for these blocks. I'm here to thank Robin Hood and Children's Aid for saving my family. I'm a New York City kid. I grew up in Queens and Brooklyn. My father died when I was six, so I don't have many memories of him. But the ones I do are bad, like the time he slashed my mother's face open with a broken hair dryer, or the time he brought his mistress home and told my mom that he was leaving us, or a few months later when he came back home because he was dying and no one else would take care of him. After he died, the cycle of abuse continued, but now it was my mom abusing me. When I was eight, my babysitter told the school what was happening, and I spent two years in three different foster homes. That's not an ideal way to grow up, but it was better than where I came from. So I was devastated when the system sent me back to my mother. My salvation was school, because school was the one place I had some control over my future. I knew that if I worked hard enough, opportunity would come my way. And it did. In high school, I got internships at DLA Piper and Cravath Swain and more. Those internships encouraged my passion for law and public policy. That passion led me to the University at Albany, where I pursued my bachelor's and master's in political science. I came back home to New York City after graduation, feeling pretty good about my future. Now that I had a graduate degree, maybe I could break the cycle of poverty and abuse for good. But when you don't have a great support system, education alone isn't always enough to save you. When I was 26, I fell in love. For two years, we had what I thought was a pretty great life. But everything changed after I became pregnant with twins. My boyfriend was unemployed, so I was the breadwinner. But my job was temporary, and when it ended, I couldn't find a new one, which meant my boyfriend no longer had somebody to buy him video games. And that's when he started to hit me in the stomach. The girls came out fine, thank God. Issa and Rosie were born on May 2nd, 2012, and they were perfect, absolutely perfect. Their father and I split up a few months later, and I was determined at this point to give Issa and Rosie a better, safer childhood, even if I had to do it by myself. But then, when the girls were six months old, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Taking care of two babies by myself was hard enough before cancer, but the chemo made it a thousand times tougher. I was so tired and weak that simple things like giving them a bath felt like running a marathon let alone dealing with the challenge of trying not to puke your heart out. At the same time, their father discovered a new way to torture me, and it was even worse than violence. He tried to take Issa and Rosie away from me. 
Nothing was off limits for him. He kept them from me in violation of court orders. And he went to the Administration for Children's Services and accused me of neglect. I want to give a shout out here to the Legal Aid Society and the Bronx Defenders, yet other Robin Hood community partners. Because with their help, every case he opened was closed because every case he opened against me was nothing but lies. When it comes to my girls, I always fight like hell and I will never give an inch. But that doesn't mean it didn't get to me. There were entire years where I cried myself to sleep. Everywhere I looked, I saw the cycle of poverty repeating itself. But this time, the victims were my daughters. As hard as I worked to give them a better life, their childhood was a mirror image of mine in so many ways. They were living in poverty. They were caught in the middle of an abusive relationship. And they were watching a parent battle a serious illness. Whenever I got too low, I would remind myself that I was not my parents. I would never, ever quit on Issa and Rosie. But determination alone wasn't enough to give my daughters the future they deserved. We needed help. Children's Aid came into my life when Issa and Rosie turned three and started attending their Head Start program in East Harlem. We came from the Bronx, by the way, every day, an hour each way, and it was worth it. It didn't take long for me to realize that this place, this community, was exactly what we were looking for. The education my girls got at Children's Aid was top notch. By the end of their first year, both girls knew their ABCs, were counting to 100, and could sing more songs by heart than me, including that of sign language. And the high expectations extended to us, the parents. Every week, their pre-K teacher sent home a packet of worksheets for us to complete together. Some of my best memories from that time are sitting with my girls and going through those worksheets. A lot of weeks, we would finish early and ask for more because we're nerds like that. But worksheets alone only get you so far. And Children's Aid understood that. They helped teach my girls valuable social and emotional skills, like how to sit at a table and serve yourself food, or how to be a good friend, or how to sit still when you really don't want to which was a big challenge for my rowdy Rosie. But I didn't realize just how much we had come to rely on Children's Aid until November 2015. That's when I learned that my cancer had returned with a vengeance. I was stage four and needed a stem cell transplant immediately. As soon as they heard the news, Children's Aid rallied around us. At every step of the transplant process, I knew that Issa and Rosie were surrounded by people who cared deeply about them, and that made everything much easier. But that doesn't mean it was easy. There's a reason they call the day of your transplant day zero, because you literally have to build up your body from scratch. My skin was completely white, but my veins were black because the chemo burned them up. My hair fell out for the second time, and my nervous system was shot, especially in my hands. Simple things like cutting food, holding a pencil, or turning pages of a book were suddenly really painful, which is a problem when you're a single parent. 
But I got better, one day at a time. And I give Children's Aid so much credit for that. For one thing, they helped me buy groceries so we could eat healthy. And when they learned that I needed to rehabilitate my hands, they invited me to volunteer at their food pantry, which was perfect because it turns out packing food into bags for hungry New Yorkers isn't just good for your soul, it's also great for rebuilding your nerves. By the time the twins graduated from pre-K last May, I was in much better shape. Now, I'm sure some people think a graduation ceremony for four-year-olds is a little silly, and maybe it is, but watching Issa and Rosie get their pre-K diplomas gave me way more pride than any of my own graduations. Seeing my girls that day, full of joy, bursting with potential, surrounded by friends, helped me realize something. I cannot remake the past. None of us can. But I do have control over the legacy I pass on to my daughters. And I'm pretty damn proud of how that legacy is shaping up. This September, Issa and Rosie had started kindergarten at Success Academy, yet another Robin Hood community partner, and they are both loving it. But we're still a children's aid family, and we always will be. Does anyone else remember those old TV ads with a bunch of cute kids singing, I'm really glad they made the children's aid society? Well, <laughs> Times change, and Children's Aid recently updated their motto to every step of the way. At first, I wasn't a huge fan. Why mess with a classic? But I've grown to love this motto for one simple reason. It's true. Children's Aid never left our side, no matter what. That is why I'm here today to thank Robin Hood for supporting a nonprofit that supported my family when we needed it most. Every step of the way. Thank you.